Welcome back. So what's my talk today gonna to be about? It's about your classroom, teachers and their classrooms. What makes up the classroom? Many teachers have a group of maybe 25 to 30 students. That's what's on the books. What may actually be in your classroom, if you're lucky, you may have 18. That's a pretty good classroom. But you may have 32 or 35, sometimes more. The days when a teacher falls sick, uh, the children might be divided up into groups of four and you get another five or six shared among teachers in that same grade level. On a normal day, this is a day when you have, say you're 25 or 30, what happens? Who are your students? What comprises the makeup of, the, of these students? You have outliers on either end. You have the smart aleck. That's a person who is going to try to outdo the teacher with smart comments. They may be genuinely smart, but that person has a game plan. Watch out. You have the really smart person, person who may be smarter than the teacher. Yeah, there's always at least one of them. Be aware, keep your mind open. You have the plotters. That's probably the majority of your class. Those who will work at it and continue to work at it until they are successful or if they feel successful. That's your general bunch. Your bell curve group in the middle. On the other end, you may have the gamer, the person who was there to play games no matter what you do. Be aware, be ready for them. You're going to have the ambitious. That's always a person who has their mind set on something really important. They know where they wanna be, where they're going, and they're gonna get there in spite of, because of, they're gonna get there. So that's kind of a general idea of who's in your class. And you, the teacher, you've got to cater for all of them by the way you organize your lessons, deliver your lessons, and select people who would lead different aspects of your lessons, your group sessions, you got to be ready for all of them. How do you do that? So day one, that's a time to observe the students. Day one is a time when there's not much work being done. You've got the role, who's present, who's absent, who can't come until tomorrow. You've got, got all that. And you have to keep those records absolutely correct. So day one is spent with each group doing your uh, absentee list, who's present, who's absent, and taking care of those. But even in the middle of that, you've got to have an activity for those kids, because you're doing that, they're not talking and upsetting your class. What do you do with them? You can set them on a problem solving. You find something very unique that gives opportunities for them to work in groups, to know each other, any simple problem solving. Some teachers get uh, what's my name games, or they have their students speak a little bit about themselves. You get to learn them and they get to learn each other. And in what they say about themselves, that's also very precious. They choose what to say, and the teacher take, should take note of what they say. Hold that for later use. You're going to discover on that first day who the leaders are. The positive leaders and the negative leaders. There's always both, or two of each. 
positive leaders might want to correct those who are going a little off tangent. The negative leaders egg on those who are going off tangent. Take note. Because what you want to do with positive leadership is role model it. You can do your carrot and stick. Subtly, uniquely, with your positive role models. And you may also do your carrot and stick subtly with your negative role models. Sometimes you bring your negative role models forward so they can lead the way. Put them on the spot to lead the class in a specific activity. You're gonna see how they'll perform. Very often they shy away from that because they don't want their negatives to be exposed. They want their negatives to be kind of the laughing stock of the class. They're gonna clown up their negatives. These are just some little tips about how you assess the personalities of the students who are sitting in your desks and how you as an individual plan to mold those into the polished gems. Remember, the students we meet are gems in the raw as they wait to be polished by us. The timid or the bold, the coarse in the mold, shine as the teacher's love enfolds them. And thank you.